Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we will be starting with part two of the M2A510 series where I'll be working with Quixel Megascan to create a nice looking macro render. Um, this here is my reference image. It's like a close up of some mushrooms in the, in the, in the forest. So I'm kind of mimic, mimic, mimicking that. Um, if you just tune in, there's already a part one um, uploaded, and uh, this is what we created in part one. Just the, the simple uh, shading setup for the mushrooms. And in today's video, I will be creating the shaders for all the other objects. Most of them will be out of focus, so I won't be spending that much time on them. But I have the ferns, I've got the clover uh, leaves, I have another set of mushrooms, and I've got this big rock here, and then I've got the ground. So it's lot, lots to cover, so I will rather quickly fly through them. And after that, we will continue refining them. So I, each object will get, will get its own tab up here. So let's just start with the ground first, um, which is this guy here. And they have a base shader. It's just the diffuse um, for now connected like this. It's ground A, let's just call this the same. And let's bring back in the other sh uh, textures for that. I have download downloaded them with um, from Quixel Megascan's website. I didn't want to do that. There we go. So this is RGFOW, RGFOW. So that's this guy. And I'm just uh, dragging and dropping in the rest of the uh, textures in here. So I'm just drag them over. I just sort it and. I kind of went through the whole um, setup in part one where the, the whole setup on the mushrooms to show you how it's been done. So I will now do it pretty quickly. So if you, if you don't know what I'm doing here, please check out part one first and then go to part two. So I'm connecting displacement and this is now more or less the, the speed I'm working with or like how I feel comfortable working. So just that you see without me doing all the explanations how I setting up the scenes so um, I don't need this I don't I need that fuzz hmm. not sure cavity nope so a bump to D actually okay so this connects right here bump value roughness gets uh, a range just that I have later more control on it over it so connecting this guy up here and now let's connect them up so roughness red goes to specular roughness and bump normal goes to normal camera and let's just reduce the value to 0 0.05 okay so that's that and I need to select the object which is here that's ground A and I just want to enable subdivisions how is it now? I'm just checking the wireframes on that guy now just to see how much we would need to subdivide it. I guess we could go away with three times. Three times Arnold uh, subdivision three times and we can also use adaptive error on we can try edge length and let's just do something maybe point point like this and see how it comes out later and this would be ground A the next group is the other ground I think it's ground B then let's just rename it ground B as you can see I'm not even checking how the renders I'm just setting it up quickly and after that I will go into each and set them up again so this is RGVW um, RGVWD so let's just find all the stuff all these guys drop them in here um, sort and do the same setup you can automate that if you write a script to uh, plug this stuff in automatically because they are mostly called the same way um, but I'll just quickly do it like this and I guess you should be able to follow along so let's just try 0.25 Bounds 1.5 here. Okay, then we bring back for this because it's a bit in the back. I don't guess we need any subdivisions on it. 
we might just get away with the bump so let's just use a bump 2d again uh, the red goes here this one goes into the normal and we need a AI range for the roughness and I think if you have done this this process several times in your life um, you get pretty comfortable and sometimes also a bit annoyed because it's very repetitive especially just the setup of things um, but I'm really trying to not bore you so that's why I'm rushing through these now so ground A, ground B, ground is group 3 I think it's the ferns it is the ferns you can actually see the rough uh, the bump map working in the viewport which is very interesting let's just see if I can well I just ignore it for now actually okay so this would be fern and let's go into their shader call this guy fern grab them uh, that's that and I think this is also a fern here yeah but I think they all share the same yeah they do let's just assign it to the shape okay <clears throat> so we've got opacity and we have albedo what is important here is that um, they all have opaque off for opacity to work and we need also subdivision so I'm using now the light shader attribute control to not do all the shapes manually so I just want to set up Cat Clark and uh, two subdivisions and you can see it's setting them for all the types automatically and now we need to find the ferns in here um, I'm not sure which one's not this one uh, plant trees assorted nope hmm I'm not sure no no fungi mushroom debris clumps mossy pieces no plants assorted had just that trees interesting let's just check it's um textures atlas boston fern hmm well i was blind here okay so here we go um it was an i think atlas exactly so for this we want um bomb we want displacement gloss oh did i download the wrong ones roughness is what we need yeah, I think that should be all. Okay, so roughness gets the range, AI range. Uh, input goes here, red channel goes to the roughness. Bump gets a bump 2D. Red channel goes there, this one goes to the normal. Uh, let's just reduce this to 0.05 displacement shader uh, red channel um, shading engine drag and drop and let's set those values to maybe 0.25 I'm just like using the same values as before and we will reevaluate after um, how they how everything looks okay so that's a fern uh, that's also fern so this can actually go in here we can delete this group then we have the other type of mushrooms if I'm not mistaken yeah that's a mushroom type uh, brown I guess mushroom underscore okay uh, let's frame this guy and bring in the textures for this <clears throat> okay so debris fungi I think that's the one debris fungi so bomb displacement and roughness in we go 
I might just speed things up, or you can skip over this. I guess I I rather keep it, and you can skip over it if you if you don't want to see all this set, setting up stuff. Well, you might miss something, so maybe stay tuned. Okay, so displacement scale 0.25 bounce one point five here. Roughness creates gets the range again. And you can see how repetitive it is, so scripting might not be the worst idea. Okay, so this guy gets 0.05. This should be the setup for the mushrooms, and just make sure if um, they have subdivisions and displacement on. I don't think they do, so let's just open the top group with attribute control. And make sure we set cat clock and let's try three subdivisions. That's fine. Um, rock. So we're almost done. This is the foreground rock, so we need to spend some time on that one. So let's load in the shader for this. Let's call this rock underscore fg. Also in here, rock FG. It's an 8K texture, so it should hold up in the foreground. Uh, let's see if I can find it. As rock granite, OH, OH. This is the one. So we want bump, displacement, roughness. Should be all we need. And if we need more, we can just bring it back later. So displacement shader. Uh, this one goes here. Point two five and one and point five. Okay, so almost, we have it almost, and then we start shading finally. This one gets 0 0.05. Okay. And the last one is, I think it's a clover leaves, if I'm not mistaken. It is, co okay, I think it's called clover leaves. I wasn't so sure last time I checked. Okay, let's first. Um, I don't even know if I think we're good if we just give them a roughness. Um, so let's just bring. They, I think they also have displacement, which is a bit over the top in my opinion. So let's just. Uh, is this the one? Yeah. So let's just bring in. Bomb should be enough. And roughness. Okay, so but I still want to subdivide them at least once just to get them them smooth. So mesh uh, catalog uh, one subdivision and create a bump two D. Normal, there we go. And AI range. <coughs> And we are done. Saving it. Okay, so this took now like 12 minutes to set it up. So I have now shaders on all my objects in the scene. And I guess this one, the rock on the back, has not has still a very strong bump map on it. <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so let's just bring this down. All right, so this is now the setup, and what I will be doing now is I will start the IPR session, and I will have I have my reference right here, and then I will um, start.
the look dev um, until we are almost on 30 minutes on time. Right, so this is now the render, and what I will do now is I will fine tune all the objects to make them all look pretty good in that environment. Keep in mind that most of the foreground stuff will be out of focus, as well as the background stuff. So um, what I like to do now is I would like to focus on on the clover fields, <laughs> clover fields, on the clover leaves, and then continue from there. I have just isolated the clover uh, clover leaves now, and I will get um, to shading right now. You can see the bump is already way too strong um, so I'll be definitely dialing that one down and then I'll bring in some uh, translucency as well. So going back to the hyper shade I will just uh, reduce the bump. I think these are the clovers, yeah. Uh, let's just bring this one to 0 0.05 <coughs> excuse me and you can see now that um, all this strong bump is now gone. So let's, let's bring it back in like a little bit. You can see it's 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 back. And now let's work on the other channels we got. So we have the roughness. And uh, let's first go into the shader and see what we got. So it's IOR of 5.2. It might be a bit much. So let's just try 4.2 four, four or whatever. Bring in all the diffuse and that's the spec. So um, let's see what we have. Spec direct. Okay, it's it looks it's pretty rough. Uh, let's just go to the map itself. It's almost one, so we can actually just clamp it a bit so we have some variations. Just a little bit more breakup, right? You can see that there's no nicer breakup on it. And let's see the spec. Yeah, definitely more detail, which is nice. Um, this looks almost metallic now, but I think the effect is pretty cool. It looks like it's kind of wet. Um, so the next thing would be to work on the um, translucency. And what I'll do for that is I'll just connect the, the color, albedo color, to the subsurface color as well. So they share the same color. And I will just go below the leaves so we can actually see um, what the effect is. Currently, it's the same color. It's just a diffuse, right? Bottom and top, same color. And if I bring in the subsurface now, you should see some, um, some nice effect here. You can see that the light is passing through it. And obviously, it's too strong right now. We can also use thin walls, which is something um, for single plane objects, which gives a faster and easier way to create the effect of translucency. And I think for these leaves, first of all, they will be in the background, and second of all, um, they will be out of focus. So this is how you would see them in the render. So if I just change to um, full full resolution, which is, uh, I think, uh, 2K, yeah. This is kind of what you get, and I think we're pretty good. We can play around with the weight a bit more, just to get them a bit more translucent. Um, but I think uh, that should be that for the shading part of these guys. Pretty simple stuff. Um, so let's focus on the next, which is the rock in the foreground. Let's look through the camera. Let's, we just see this edge actually, so um, let's see what we can do about that. That's the rock. Uh, definitely not too much going on. We have a nice soft shadow on it, um, but we definitely need some work. So this is the diffuse. Let's see how the other channels look like. If I go to uh, Rock FG, isolate selected. This is displacement map. Roughness is very boring, so let's definitely work with that. Okay, so now we have some pings in there. Okay, more contrasty. You get some some nice glints now. We can actually. Um, 
increase the effect a bit. There we go. And we don't have a real bump map, so we will introduce that now as well. Now let's see. Okay, there's not much in the maps, unfortunately. Uh, we can see if we can bring something back using the displacement. That's enabled. So let's see if we ever bring up the strength. Let's go into basic. Wow. Okay, so this is our rock. It's it's not really working. Um, so now we need to play with the zero values, I guess, to get something more interesting. So 0.4 is the wrong way, so let's try 0.25. Yeah, I'm not so sure if we'll get the detail we need with the maps we got provided. Now this looks even worse. Okay, so let's just go 0.5. And what I will do now, I will create a, a small noise pattern just to break up the the bump. So I got really almost nothing on a displacement, and I'll just try to break the surface up with some uh, noise patterns. Because I think I'm pretty sure the bump map here is not really helping. Or is it? Oh no, it's helping quite a bit. Okay, let's just combine two bump maps then. So I will create a AI noise and I'll create a bump 2D. What you can do, like each bump map has a slot for a normal. That's so why I can find it show all I guess yeah so th they have a normal camera so you can just plug in an other map in there and you can combine maps like this pretty neat trick so this is my current noise so let's bring a, some detail in it let's use pref bring in some distortion scale it up by 10 maybe Okay, so this is what is looking better. Let's just bring down the effect. Let's see what we get now. Okay, definitely broken up and now I can control the strength of this map and I can slowly introduce some values. You can see now how it's working and I think it's working pretty good. Let's see how it's working here. Yeah, a lot more detail. So if I remove the effect now, it's pretty flat, and if I bring it back, I think 1.5. Um, you can see A and B, and it looks way more detailed. And that's exactly what I was going for, just to get these nice and crisp reflection glints. And I think it's, it's pretty good. It will be, remember, out of focus. <coughs> okay, so continuing on, the next one is Mushroom Brown. Um, pretty close up, let's render. Okay, let's focus on this guy. Um, one, one. Okay. It looks pretty lame. There's not much going on. So let's see what we can do by first um, increasing the bump st uh, the sp placement strength. Okay, let's first check out basic mode. Um, so, let's see. That's not right. That's not right either. That's not right. Okay, that's better. So, let's just reduce this guy. So that's a default value. And yeah, well, it's not ideal, but let's just work with this guy. And now let's um, control it using the other maps, I guess. Well, let's see what we have in, um, in the bump. Yeah, I guess the bump, that's what it's com where the, these bumps are coming from on that here using because of this. Yep. 
Okay, that's unfortunate. We don't have a really nice, good looking map here. Okay, let's just keep it there for now. Let's see what we have in here. I guess none of these are really made for these really close up renders. Uh, I guess we need to invert this, right? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we have a shiny top and then we have a rougher stem, which is ideally what we want to have. <coughs> okay, and now I guess if it's too much, we can just reduce the overall roughness by doing this. Okay, what we're doing. Okay. Also, ne next thing is to bring the um, subsurface scattering. Let's bring that in. Obviously, we need a color, so let's just create an AI color correct node this time. And I'll connect the color here, and this one goes into the SSS color. And I want to be controlling the color, um, maybe to desaturate it a bit and make it a bit brighter. Maybe a little hue shift in the reds, like this. Okay. And then we have the power to control the radius. There we go. And I think this looks now very waxy, but the effect is pretty cool, I think. You can see it on the thin areas where the light is scattering, and then on the thicker parts, you can see how it's blocking it. And if you compare it with the reference, it's similar what's happening here. This is just a bit too strong. I think we need to get a bit more of the yellow tint to it instead of the um, brownish tint. Maybe like this and then reduce the overall scale. Okay. And disable, okay. So now I'm just re re uh, reducing the overall SSS effect so we get some diffuse contribution and some scattering. So now this is both worlds and I think it's a bit too shiny still. I'm reducing now the IOR and I am bringing back more roughness. So it's overall not as shiny and I think this is almost getting there. It's, I think it, it might be still a bit too translucent. Let's see how the other one looks like. This one actually works better, in my opinion. Okay, so for now, let's keep it as it is, and let's just work on the next one. So the next would be the fern, which is the, the green grass kind of things. Let's focus on the left because they will be the more prominent in view. And for now, there is no SSS on them, so I definitely need to enable this. Um, I'm, we might get away with thin walled. And let's just plug in the same map. So I'll just create an AI color correct again. Not converter. Uh, let's see. There we go. And we want to just slightly reduce the saturation on that. And maybe shift it a bit in the yellow range to get a nice warm color bleed. From here to from here to here, so a bit more yellow, I guess. Okay. 
and let's see what we can more do on the shaders. So currently 1.6 weight. So now I'm bringing in the translucency, and you can see it's it's working. I'm not sure if we need to make the object double-sided. If it's not on default, I'm not so sure. Um, it is double-sided. Okay, it doesn't even matter. <coughs> All right, so let's see what we have in direct spec. I guess it's too broad. Um, spec direct, yeah. Let's see. First of all, this one goes to 4.2. And let's work on the range, which is very rough, right? Uh, let's just bring it down. So we break it up with some more shiny parts and then like this. Direct spec. And you can see now we get these nice hot glints on both sides. And that's exactly what I want to have, which hopefully will look good in the end. So that's the fern. We've got the mushrooms. We've got, I guess, we have the ground. Did I work? I'm not sure if I worked on ground A. I don't think I did. I guess for this one I will also need the a, a fake bump map just to make it a bit more detailed. But first let's see what we get. Okay. I think it's supposed to be leaves actually, so yeah, we need to see what we can do about it. Okay, so let's see what the displacement is doing for us, 0.2, okay, this is that, basic, yeah, it's not ideal, let's, uh, I guess we need to do the, some detailing up with a bump map. First, let's see what the roughness looks like, it's also white, I guess, um, I'm not sure the color space. It should be raw, but it's. I guess it's the wrong. It's wrong. I think it needs to be a sRGB then. The thing is, roughness maps should be linear, so the, the color space should be raw. But I'm not sure. It's it's not normal that it's fully like this rough. It shouldn't be on default. So I don't know. So let's just bring in some ranges. Not sure why nothing is happening. Ah. Okay. Let's see what we get. Okay, now definitely way more shiny. And Let's see if we can break it up a bit. Yeah, so now we have a few like kind of wet spots. Like this wet spots. And now what I just want to do, I want to kind of do the same effect using the bump. First, let's bring in a stronger bump. And then do two, like just blend two together. So just create an AI noise. Like this. It's just to add a little bit of detail. It's not supposed to be hyper realistic now. It's it's mostly just to get some like breakup on the specs. Bump to D, there we go. And let's connect the red here. Not AI, sorry, just bump to D. And we show all and this one connects to the normal. And now I just want to control the map a bit so let's go up maybe to five okay let's try 15 and bring in distortion change the color value so they are not as strong on default and see what we get okay 
Okay, introducing it a bit. And you can see already, we just have like this little effect, how 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 much a big difference it does, right? You can see that's now everywhere there's a little bit more structure on it, which just helps to sell the whole thing. And it's supposed to be leaf, so there should be something on it. Um, we can also try to do some subsurface scattering. I'm not sure how it will look, but let's just see first. Just connecting it to the color the base color to the subsurface color, uh, just reducing it quite a bit and then slowly bringing it in and reducing the radius. Looks almost like I don't know, something to eat. Um, but I guess if we have a really low radius, we might get away with that just a really subtle effect okay so um, this should be now this is now I was rushing through it quite a bit now but um, I just wanted to show you what I got with this setup and I will render this now and then I'll be back so this is now the result for uh, um, for the session of part two you can see it's already working pretty nice with the bouquet you get here from the specs. You can see the fern is looking pretty cool. And obviously the main focus point is the mushrooms in the center. So I think it works pretty good already. Um, in the next tutorial, I will work on, um, I guess, some more shading updates or tweaks. And then I will focus on a more beauty lighting setup with a bit more broken up lights, uh, and especially um, to match the reference more closely so you can see the reference is pretty blown out here and that's something what i want to create too and also some mushrooms are in the full sunlight as this one is and i i might just be ending up setting up a position um, creating a new mushroom and positioning right here so we get the same effect um yeah so thanks for tuning in and i hope you you did enjoy it part two it, it took a bit longer than expected um but thanks for tuning in and the next uh, part three will be out very soon and have fun watching that. Thanks again.